So I am here today, not doing a genuine chit chat episode because that's how I normally introduce a genuine chit chat episode. So that was funny. Um, I'm here though with the Podfather, Dave Horrocks, to speak about Tales of the Jedi, the newest uh, animated sort of special. Uh, we don't know if there's going to be a series two or not, uh, but we'll, I've got a specific thing. I think we'll talk at length probably as what kind of things we want to explore with other characters in a similar vein to Tales of the Jedi. I'm sure you'll have uh, some interesting ones to say there, but. Before we delve into that, it is specifically about these six episodes of Tales of the Jedi. So, Dave, obviously you've seen Clone Wars and Rebels, and Clone Wars specifically, I think this is like a almost like a Clone Wars series eight or Clone Wars, very much a Clone Wars spin-off sort of thing. How much do you like with Clone Wars? Obviously, we've only spoke about it a little bit because of the Bad Batch. So what what is your impression of Clone Wars? When did you start watching it? You know, were you one who caught up with it from the start? Did you watch it when it started kind of the recanalization? came in full force where did you uh sort of sit with clone wars before we delve into tales of the jedi so i kind of dropped out of kind of obsessively trying to learn everything about star wars and stuff probably in my 30s or something like that actually you know what the prequels burned me a little bit and <laughs> really did not like them and so you know i was busy sort of learning about other stuff and so I kept hearing about Clone Wars, but I didn't really know what it was. And then I can't remember when it was. It, it was fairly recently, like the last two or three years. And I thought, right, I'm going to give this Clone Wars a try. Mm-hmm. And I put on the Clone Wars movie. <laughs> and I thought, what the fuck is this shit? This is awful. This is absolutely terrible. It is for kids. And I see, no, it's, that's not fair. It's not that it was terrible. It just really wasn't for me. And I was like, right, I do not need to see any of that at all. Mm-hmm. And it was actually hearing you talk passionately about it and then breaking it down and saying about, well, you know, season one is a few good episodes, season two, and then it just gets better and better and better. But I'm a bit of a completionist as well. So I can't just say, right, I'll cherry pick those. And I think I actually... <laughs> I think I watched Rebels first as a full series. And it's almost like Clone Wars is a companion to the prequels, whereas Rebels is a prequel to the main trilogy, isn't it? It's almost like a companion. It's it's closer in terms of time and that. Mm-hmm. But so yeah, the I, I eventually sat down and started going through Clone Wars, starting from season one, episode one. And yeah, it was a bit patchy, but even almost from the off, it had a different tone to the movie. The the mm-hmm. the movie was just four or five year olds, you know, with stinky the fucking jab of the hook, <laughs> oh shoot kind of thing. And so it just just I, I I was sort of bought in straight off the bat, even though the episodes weren't great. And then the more I kind of got into it. And you'd said, like, the last few seasons, you know, they're the absolute best. But I found myself getting more sucked into, I think it was season four, when Mm. they were kind of, well, first of all, how they make all of these clones so unique. It is amazing that that they can do that. But you you realize how kind of disposable they are. and, And then when you had that, I can't, I can't remember what it is, but was that that the one who was Full basically, dude? And, yeah, sending him in to get killed off? Yeah, yeah, he was a, a better list. He was the same species as Dexter Jetster from that's uh, it. Attack of the Clones. Him, yeah, that's yeah, Pong yeah, yeah. And it was just like I'm feeling really sorry for these clones, and I'm like, you know, this is really, really well written stuff. So I found some of season four the most thought provoking. But yeah, it was just absolutely brilliant. Now, I've only been through it the once. It's such an undertaking. I just haven't had time to go through it again, but I would like to go through it again because when you're binging stuff, you don't pick up, you don't sit and digest what you've just seen. You just want to find out what happens next. So I do want to go back and I do want to watch it again. But uh, no, it's what is it? Your tagline is, Mike? some of the best star wars content that's out there or is that rebels <laughs> rebels for me is uh, clone wars is very close but i just think with clone wars 
because there are like Rebels just gradually gets better apart from the season two finale which I think is one of the greatest pieces of Star Wars content that exists um, it's generally just better and better and better and better there are little spikes in it but it's just such a by the end series you're so so bought in there are so many powerful episodes with Clone Wars although I love it even in series seven there's a few episodes that are weaker it's not like a bell curve because there's so many episodes it's it's more of a bell curve is the wrong thing um, I mean it's not like an upward uh, correlation positive mm. correlation it's kind of like it does gradually get better but mm. it's not a strong one because there are just still odd episodes in between I think once you get to series 3 every episode's worth watching uh, but I think series 4 of Clone Wars is my favourite series as well um, mm. I just adore all the stuff with Maul I mean the Pong Krell stuff the Umbar arc you're 100% right there it's a very powerful arc and there's the Mordis arc but I think that's I can't remember what series that's in with the Mordis gods and things but the stuff with Maul is some mm. of my favourite content out there. I, I absolutely adore Maul as a character. So Clone Wars, for me, although Raw, uh, Maul appears in Rebels, and I love Maul's appearances in Rebels, he's a lot more in Clone Wars. He's a central antagonist for a long time, and I love Clone Wars. I'd happily have even more of it, just focusing on other Jedi and things. And that's basically, if this is going to be a show that's not just a one-off they've not confirmed it but i would imagine by the amount of people who've probably watched it and uh the amount of other characters they could do it for they've probably got a lot of um models already configured and things that they could use mm. easily um so if this is going to be something that's continuing on i'm incredibly excited but when they announced it was ahsoka and dooku I'm very thrilled about that how are you feeling going in were you more excited about ahsoka or were you more excited about dooku i had no idea <laughs> yeah, you, you 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 said uh, uh, do you want to do tales of jedi i was like all oh, right there's something else coming out is there okay great let's do it so i went in completely blind oh, and, and so i've jealous. said this to other people that like i used to consume all the trailers and everything but i think what tonya's taught me is actually that there is some virtue in just trying to go in as blind as you can and so I, I don't know it is a superpower that she has there because i can't avoid these things so if i see something it's like all oh, right okay that's i mean the the black adam uh reveal i don't know if you've seen that but at the end of that movie it was so obvious because I, don't know, just, I haven't seen it, but I know I'm okay. fairly certain I know what it is that it's going to be. Exactly. So I'm not going to spoil it, but just because of everything that was on social media, it's like, huh? Well, I know what the mid credits going to be. <laughs> um, so, so, but that is that is fine. Whereas this, I think I find it easier to go in completely blind. Um, so yeah, I had no idea, and it was only after probably episode three or four. I'm like. All oh, right, it's, it's the two reoccurring characters and just <laughs> little vignettes of their kind of stories there. So yeah, I just had no idea. Who did you prefer seeing in general in this? Hands down, Dooku. Agreed. I thought a lot of the Ahsoka stuff uh, was a little bit disposable. I don't mm. really, I don't feel like it added to her character. I don't th think it really progressed our understanding of her at all. Whereas Dooku, you're like, oh shit, he's a bit of a uh, sympathetic character as well. He's almost like an Anakin. Mm. You, you know, you can kind of get why he makes these difficult choices. And the thing I I used to love, you know, in the the very first Star Wars was it was it was black and white. It was the goodies and the baddies. It was the Allies versus the Nazis. You know that that's where it was. No no choice at all. What I think the prequels had the potential to do, but failed miserably at doing, was explore you know the the grayness in between. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know. You asked me about Clone Wars. I don't know. Does it make the prequels better, or does it make you think well they're worse? Because you actually had underlying to it all of this rich content, all of this rich story that you could have told and you just executed it pretty poorly. And so I think what Clone Wars did, it, it made you realize like why Anakin did switch. You know, it wasn't just a whimsical thing. Um, and I think that really fills out the understanding of Anakin. And I kind of feel like that with this series with Dooku, it, it kind of, you can't have a strong argument to what he was arguing against you you can see his point of view 
and well you know you can see that is the path to the dark side yeah. but it's not like it, it's like the boiling frog isn't it it, mm-hmm. it just makes these small decisions and it takes him the wrong way because being a jedi you you can't just make these little compromises it's got to be all or nothing and that's where his kind of mistake was and that's how he got manipulated but i thought it again it filled in the gaps brilliantly because we just meet uh dooku in attack of the clones don't we find out you know he used to be this jedi and that's it he's a baddie now and he wants to he's he's a mustache twirling baddie as well isn't he you know he's just ready to throw people in the pit to get killed off whereas again i I thought he was brilliant here how it showed you when he was younger you know beardless (laughs) as well you know with a young qui-gon jinn i thought the animation was brilliant on that but by the way so yeah hands down whereas ahsoka yeah i mean especially that first one life and death i thought it was so disposable it almost reminded me of that first um clone wars you know the the movie mm, oh yes yeah, so i see what you mean where it's just like it could be an after school special or something <laughs> yeah like, where is this really going <laughs> what is this see i i did enjoy i did enjoy the first ahsoka episode but i thought the third one was the weakest um but that's because, and this has been a, a common thing people have said online, is that there's a book by E.K. Johnston called Ahsoka. Uh, in fact, it's behind me. Um, there it is. If people are watching uh, the video version of this, there you go. Um, Ahsoka by E.K. Johnston. Uh, and this actually tells the story of Ahsoka after Order 66. It has a bit of the Siege of Mandalore in it because it was before Clone Wars Series 7 came out and things. It was one of the earlier things in canon. And... It's really, really good, but she goes to this planet and she has this interaction with people and it's quite an in-depth character story and it takes her a while to really show herself to be a Jedi. And then the final confrontation, it's how she gets... um, She has a fight with Inquisitor, much like in the show, but that's how she gets the lightsaber crystals and she purifies them and that's what becomes her white blade. And I was like, that's what they're going to do. That's what they're going to... They're going to show us a lightsaber purification. Oh, I can't mm. wait to see that. That's going to be so cool. Obviously, this is, once again, it was my expectations. But then when they did it, I was like, oh, yeah, this is quite similar. That's the Ahsoka book falling because it didn't put it in properly. Um, but She's it's, using the force. I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it was the pop. It was the Funko pop there. I nudged her. Um, <laughs> but it, I, I found that that was a bit disappointing. And then there's these characters that she met and they didn't have the same names as the characters in the book. And I was like, so you can't it's like the the broad strokes of the events are the same it's she was on this other planet and she was hiding away and uh things like that but then she gets found by an inquisitor and then she beats it and then joins the alliance uh or joins whatever becomes the alliance with bail but like it just felt like it it was cool to see her fight this inquisitor and he had a cool character design but aside from that there wasn't really anything else about it it was just like this disposable cool fight i found the second one mm. added to her character because it really showed it made Clone Wars better. It was like a prelude to Clone Wars Series 7, the kind of f- final four episodes. Mm. So I liked that, and I liked how Anakin's teachings was a critical thing to save her from his own sort of wrath in a way, um, and War 66, etc. But the first one, I was like, oh, we get Story of Ahsoka, and lots of things like that. So I enjoyed those, but the third fell a bit flatter for me. And as you say, I think the Dooku stuff, we got new content, whereas Ahsoka is like, kind of no most of this apart from that first episode we do kind of know this you know Mm. i think the the practice makes perfect i think if you had a longer series Mm. you know like like it was a clone wars series i thought it would have fit in there really nice but the fact that you've got this tight you've got this six episode run it it just (sighs) i don't know it it was chilling though wasn't it that very Mm. last scene when she's walking out and, and you know we know what happens because the clone wars and stuff so it, it was it was almost as if I, I didn't really care for the whole episode but there was a massive payoff right <laughs> at the end you know what i mean so it, it kind of felt like it was worth it i guess by the end mm. but again it didn't really i don't think it it, it just wasn't necessary i don't no. think no, I think it, it was very much a middle 
episode it was quite a fillery one um mm. but yeah i think we're both on similar pages with ahsoka and dooku um so let's let's delve into the episode specifically a little bit more because i've kind of flitted around the place a little bit so uh, life and death it's around 35 um to 34 years before the battle of yavin uh, so this is around uh, the time of sort of a bit before phantom menace ish um just a smidge because one thing that's mm-hmm. interesting about these episodes that i didn't expect is they're done in chronological order so that mm. means it goes ahsoka dooku 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 ahsoka ahsoka which i thought was quite uh quite cool mm. so with life and life and death obviously we get ahsoka's birth and then we get sort of the uh the colony of Tegrutas and her mum and things like that and uh, the mum is voiced by the person who plays Iden Versio in Battlefront 2 she does a lot of other voice work I should have written down a name so apologies I'll find that out in a minute um the character is Parv T um but what did you think in general of that episode I know you said that it wasn't that uh exciting it didn't really add that much more but about the Tegrutas and the animal sort of thing how what, what did you think about that do you think the episode should have been shorter longer just about something different what are your kind of thoughts I, I don't know what it told us. Mm. I think every single Jedi has their own story. Mm-hmm. Every Jedi at some point in their young life will exhibit some kind of behavior. And then their parents or their tribe or whoever they're part of, you know, will go, holy shit, you're using the force here. Could be a <laughs> Jedi. Let's get them off, get them off to Jedi school. Um so that was a stoker, you know, and it, some of the moments were pretty brutal. You know, I thought the the tiger or saber tooth tiger type thing, you know, it's quite vicious, wasn't it? You know, mm-hmm. so again, I'm saying it's a bit kiddie, but that was a, a little bit scary in moments. But yeah, just I was left wondering what the point was, really, because it was like, OK, so Ahsoka, this is where she shows her. Jedi powers, you know, so Anakin, we saw it in Phantom Menace. Mm-hmm. Okay, everyone's got their story. We we always know that someone's got to have the Jedi powers, and then it, you know, that was the payoff at the end. So, yeah, I, I, I think I like this one probably the least. It, okay. it was off to a really weak start for me, just because it, I didn't feel like I learned anything. Mm-hmm. You know, she she's got her own species. Okay, well. So is everyone in Star Wars? <laughs> um, she was born. Yeah, check. Everyone <laughs> also is born. Um, you know, she was very, very young when she started to show she had some kind of control over the Force. Don't know. You make don't, a very don't most did I? <laughs> you make a very good argument. Um, I will just say her mum, Parv T, was played by uh, Janina uh, Gavankar. Um, she's a voice mm-hmm. actress. She's been in. Uh, Borderlands and Star Wars Battlefront 2 as Iden Versio, those sort of things and other stuff. Um, I always feel bad when I don't choose, say people's uh, names uh, in this sort of thing. But yeah, I mean, I I did enjoy it, but I knew because I went in knowing there's three Ahsoka episodes. I was like, okay, this is mm. this is the uh, this is going one step earlier than everything we know about Ahsoka. And then it was the I was like, oh, we're going to see something else. And I saw in the trailer uh, her doing the spinny move thing. So I was like, oh, you're going to get Anakin training her. Uh, in some capacity so it's going to be kind of and you recognize her specific flip move is quite an iconic moment in clone wars series seven so it's like oh i i noticed that immediately and then the finale that was the weakest part for me but with this one i was like oh this is just laying the groundwork this is kind of like i viewed it in a way that this is almost a way for people who haven't seen the clone wars i imagine there's a percentage of people who are like i can't be asked with seven seasons of the clone wars but i want to know more about ahsoka uh, and who this character is who showed up in the Mandalorian and Book of Boba Fett and she's got her own show coming out so what what are we going to do about that uh, so I think that this kind of served as a way to shortcut and be like she's a really powerful Jedi and she was trained by Anakin and you don't need to know all the ins and outs and the details you can find that out but in the Mandalorian th- when she appears in Mandalorian and the Ahsoka show this is basically all you need to know is you see her trained by Anakin. We all know Anakin's Vader. You don't know that she ever goes against him again, but I imagine that'll get at least mentioned in the Ahsoka show. But that's how I kind of viewed it as a as a as a tease for that. So mm. I did enjoy it. But apart from the, you know, Togruta family, I was like, yeah, as you kind of said, I wasn't thrilled by it. I was like, yeah, this is episode one, kind of plodding along, see where this kind of goes. Um they were hunting that these deer as well that are called Kai Bucks, which are quite cool. And they're in the Clone Wars micro series, the 2D one, uh, mm-hmm. from which is technically Legends now. Mm. Um, Yoda rides one actually, so that was quite cool. I think it's the first time in canon. But 
Yeah, aside from that, there wasn't anything that really stood out. There were a couple of like dog-like things that looked like loth cats, but loth but like dogs, which I thought were cute. Mm. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I did enjoy, but I wasn't thrilled uh, by this one. So if you're ready, we can go on to the next one. The, the only thing I'll say is what, mm. what I find interesting is I'm saying, you know, it, it taught me nothing new. It sounds like you were more excited because you kind of knew what was coming, which is counter to what I was saying before. <laughs> I've gone in completely blind, but I am expecting to see something new. Mm. And it's a good point. Maybe this is more something for people who aren't going to watch all Clone Wars. Mm. Um, but, you know, in terms of that needle, you know, knowing the Star Wars universe, you're way over the other side to me, but you still kind of enjoyed it. So... I don't know. It's it's a weird one, isn't it? Sometimes there's no real explanation as to why you like what you like. Yeah, it's uh, it is one of. Those. I mean, I didn't love it, and I would say I wouldn't want it to be any longer. Um, and I could have done without it, but it, it's just you don't really get to see that many Togrutas in Star Wars. I was like, oh, that's that's cool. You know, I, I wasn't thrilled by it. Um, but when I got when I watched the series, I'm not. I don't think the series compares to Clone Wars. I think just the Dooku episode would make a really good Clone Wars arc, but I don't mm. think it compares to the Pong Crow and Baron arc or any of the Maul stuff or anything. I think this would sit sort of kind of series two or three. That mm. kind of it's getting really good. It's starting to really go up, but it's not its peak. That's what I kind of feel about the series as a whole. Anyone's watching a video as well notice I've got a glove on now. I have eczema because I always get asked questions about that, and I don't want there being this big thing on the internet of people uh because i know everyone's interested in what my hands are doing all the time um i thought you're just a big michael jackson fan people say that all the time <laughs> and the fact that my name is mike or obviously my name is actually michael at work it was when i started wearing this uh, okay. it was non-stop so i'll add you to oh, the list right, okay add you to the list of many <laughs> i'm not offended by it i've just it's a it's a good one um i'm not doing my diamond encrusted <laughs> no, it's uh, it's fluffy because it's been through the tumble dryer a few times. So fluffy encrusted, <laughs> dust bunny encrusted. That's the special. Um, so let's move on to uh, so the episode two. And really, this is going to obviously bleed into all, all of them in a way because this is like a... I'm glad they did the Dooku stuff like this one after another. It really helped with the pacing and stuff I found. But with Dooku in canon, I did a video... Uh, which is now going to be uh, incomplete, obviously, but it was early on in Comics and Canon a couple of years ago, one of the earliest ones I did. And it was about Dooku and his timeline and when about he turned to the dark side and what kind of happened. And we didn't know exactly what. There's like two one-off comics about it. He appears in like one other comic very briefly. And then there's Dooku Jedi Lost, which is the main one, which is an audio drama by Kevin Scott. And aside from that and the movies and the Clone Wars, like in the Clone Wars, you don't really get that much backstory about him. You just know what he's doing at that time. So for me, knowing so much about the law, especially around the prequel era, there was just, it was so nice to be able to get this amount of information. And with Qui-Gon, uh, young Qui-Gon is voiced by Liam Neeson's son. So Liam Neeson voices older Qui-Gon and his son voices younger Qui-Gon, which I thought was really oh, cool. Oh, wow. So what did you think of Justice, this uh, first episode where Qui-Gon and Dooku go and kidnap, uh, retrieve a kidnapped child? Yeah, so I, I think, Having not cared about the first one, mm. for me, this second one pulled me right back in. Yeah. Because, again, it has you questioning. Okay, so you watch the episode, and that's fine. But then it's the thoughts that it leaves you with afterwards as well. You're thinking, like, well, was the Senate that great? Was it so much better than the Jedi? A, a big problem I have is the the uh, playing about they did with the the end of return the jedi <laughs> you know they the they got rid of the ewoks yub nub song and then the whole galaxy was celebrating and all of the things in the prequels that are kind of like you know when you, when you have stuff like clone wars filling out the gaps and helping you understand a little bit of the motivation and how clever palpatine was and stuff and also, uh, with the stuff that's going on in the US in the last decade, uh, that also helps to bring it home. And it's like, all oh, right, okay, this is how you manipulate power. And, you know, it's it's quite clever. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I just thought, so the, the ending for Return of the Jedi, when everyone was celebrating, was just bullshit. It's like, no, not everyone would be celebrating. Um, yeah, a bunch of rebels fucking, you know, 
won a won a little battle on Endor. Whoop de doo. Um, mm. so, yeah, <laughs> it's a pet peeve of mine. But with this one, you sort of say, well, no, not everyone in the Senate was good. And there was these whole, there was all these uh, cases, these incidents of injustice throughout the galaxy. And you can see why Dooku is like, well, I'm judge, jury, and executioner, or I can be. And it it must be difficult because, again, I'm kind of wondering, what were the Jedi actually? You know, because I think they question it in some of these episodes. They're just like the, the muscle for the Senate, really. Yeah. And they kind of are. So he's deciding that, well, he's not going to be the muscle. He's going to make his own choice, which is apparently the dark side. And so it, it, it leaves me thinking, well, did he make the wrong choice? I think the moment where he, you can say, ah, that's, that's when he's walking down the dark side is where he uses the force choke. And you're like, ah, well, you know, even though Luke did it and we all skate over that, you know, uh in return of the jedi but but again you can kind of say would i do that maybe i would maybe you know this this senator was a bit of a douchebag and kind of needed to be even his son thought he was a douchebag <laughs> you know so it was just a bit of quick thinking by Qui-Gon Jin. um but you know it was also a bit lucky as well so yeah, I, th- I thought Justice was great. I, I loved it and um, really thought provoking. And in a you know twenty minute or whatever it was episode, just made me care about Dooku, whereas I didn't really care about him before. You know, Christopher Lee legend. Mm-hmm. Um, but like I say, he was a, in the prequels, a little bit mustache twirling. Um, so didn't really understand his motivation at all. He was just a bad guy, and that was it. You know, um, yeah, really good. I agree completely, and I feel I feel exactly the same. It does really add a lot of depth to uh, Dooku's character, and it's it is that thing where the prequel era Jedi. One thing that George Lucas was trying to do but failed to do in the prequels in a lot of ways, even though he used it to win my comics on trial uh, argument for the Phantom Menace, it is that as a throwback quite a while ago. Uh, it is that the prequel <laughs> era Jedi were quite useless in a lot of ways they lost their way they weren't doing what was morally right they were doing what the senate want them to do and that's not correct yeah. that's not how you do it and although they criticized anakin for um you know being so close to the chancellor they were also like you know our um, our allegiance is to the republic and it's like well it shouldn't be it should be your allegiance to the jedi order and the order is above all else it shouldn't matter what the government's doing you should do what mm-hmm. is right and they do fight against cold-blooded murder a lot of the time but what ends up happening is that jedi they're kind of meant to be seen by the republic as the great disarmers they're meant to be like well this person's in power they're trying to negotiate stuff when they've got people hostage or that there's a crime lord you know uh stealing children things like that so you need to go in there and be the unstoppable force of good and then what they do in the prequels is they go you need to be the unstoppable force to stop this uh, counter government coming in and taking over our ideals even though we are evidently a corrupt democracy that isn't working and even Padme who serves it literally constantly says the democracy is flawed doesn't work nothing's working I try and do these things mm. and the only time she really gets things done is when she pulls a blaster out she tries her best <laughs> But in the Clone Wars, it shows time and time again, she tries to do this thing, then someone has an assassination attempt on her or tries to blow something up or things like that. And then she has to become this badass uh, Sigourney Weaver and alien style hero, which is amazing. Vigilante, it, maybe. Yeah, which really Terrorist. Has <laughs> well, that, this is the problem. <laughs> she's on the side of the Republic and she's against the Separatists, but she wants there to be truth. She doesn't want to have to use violence. But when she does, mm. she's so good at it and it does end up working she won't cold bloody kill someone and that's kind of the line for a while but as the prequels end it kind of you do get those questions in clone wars where it's like well if i'd have killed this person when i had the chance if i'd have killed dooku this person wouldn't have died this wouldn't have happened and that's the thing they talk about in dark disciple uh the clone wars novel about quinlan Voss and sarge ventress that was made from uh unused clone wars episodes it's all about like the whole premise of the, the book starts with the jedi order planning an assassination attempt on count dooku which is you know that that's politically that, that's so illegal. You know, literally killing a political rival. 
And mm. there's like the Jedi doing that. And it just, re- and that's towards the end of the Clone Wars. And it's just, re- and Anakin is furious about it. And it's like, this is the kind of thing that harms a prequel era Jedi. And I think that mm. with a character like Qui- Qui-Gon, who's so, he's so purely moral, he's kind of what the ideal Jedi should be. He disagrees with the council. He's not a part of the, uh, the things that they think all the time. <clears> he's <throat> on his own past. The, co- the cosmic force he follows. That's what I love as well. I think they're very good at characters that balance together and they work with a Padawan master relationship. Mm. But what was the, when we first meet Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan in Phantom Menace, they say something about the negotiations. They make a reference to negotiations somewhere else. And Mm. again, it implies they just came in and took names, you know, and (laughs) it's just, they're like the SS uh, really. So, yeah, I, it's a great point about uh, Qui Gon. Actually, I mean, so especially some of the stuff in in like Clone Wars and stuff. That then he, the fact that he is a bit of a rebel to the Jedi Council. Um, it, it just it makes you makes you question everything. But also, I, I kind of like it, but I kind of don't like it as well. I, I like the idea that jo- Yoda is this, uh, you know, he's the ultimate Jedi Master, whereas really. He was fucking asleep at the wheel. Hmm. <laughs> you know, he's a bit shit, really. Um, and we find out as well a bit later on. Not everyone speaks like that uh, from his species. Yeah, which is which is amazing. Well, uh, some of us who uh, read the High Republic, Yaddle shows up in the High Republic and does speak ah. normally, but she only has like a couple lines, and everyone was a little bit like, surely they wouldn't have got permission to be able to do this if they weren't. Like they were like, oh, maybe we're just maybe that's just Yaddle. Maybe it's just mm. a little fun thing. We're not really going to delve into Yoda's species anymore. Maybe Grogu, maybe the mystery of Grogu is he's never going to talk. Who knows? Mm. But it's like when that happened, and it was in animation. So like the majority of Star Wars fans know it's like yes, and it was voiced by Bryce Dallas Howard, who's obviously everything she does with Star Wars is incredible. Yeah, um, and obviously her dad uh, directed uh, St- Solo, which I do enjoy as well. But yeah, I, I just think Dooku and Qui Gon. Um, I I loved seeing it. I love Qui Gon. He's one of my favorite characters. And the more mm. we get to explore, like he's cool in the Phantom Menace. But then when you see the bits of him in Clone Wars and flashbacks, and there's other content like Master and Apprentice that you get him. The more you find out about Qui Gon, he what and the whole thing that Filoni came out and said about his interpretation of Duel of Fates playing in the Phantom Menace is that Duel of Fates is good versus evil, but evil won because Qui Gon was the only person mm. who could have potentially stopped Anakin turning to the dark side because mm. Qui Gon was like a father figure, whereas Obi Wan is like a brother, and he mm. and Anakin needed a father. That's the that's the problem. Uh, so it's I just love anything with Qui Gon, and I thought him him being Dooku's anchor was really cool and the book master and apprentice there's flashback scenes where things like this happen and it's it's amazing so if we move on to choices um it's about dooku and mace windu two antitheses to each other so what do you think of mace windu uh, as a character um, when you saw him primarily in the prequels but then obviously he does show up in the clone wars quite a bit as well i mean i love samuel l jackson i saw him the first thing i saw him in was um Pulp fiction Yes, and just, yes. He, he, he's so good in that, and then he, he kind of he, he's almost the same in everything else after that, wasn't <laughs> he? So, you know, he, he's just awesome. But and in the prequels, I did enjoy his character. I like the fact he got a purple lightsaber just because he wanted one, and then that started <laughs> like a whole thing. Why is it purple? And you know, so I did enjoy him. As time has gone on. I think he's a bit of a Nazi. I think he's, again, uh, the whole thing, like, he's just a bit of a dick, really. I mean, just <laughs> let Anakin onto the council. And all of this doesn't happen. You know, it's just like, why do you have to be such a dick? But no, it, it, he's also, you know, he is kind of responsible for Anakin as well. That that moment where, you know, he he is trying to execute Emperor Palpatine. You know, he is deciding he is judge, jury, and executioner. And I think you and I were talking way back, and and you were saying that was the last straw almost for Anakin, where, you know, he's still clinging on to this idea of the Jedi. And you got Mace Windu just ready to, to murder a politician. So, yeah, I'm not really a fan. 
<laughs> Megan hates Mace Windu. She loves the actor, <laughs> loves the character of like how he impacts the story, mm -hmm. but she hates him as a person because she blames him a lot for what yeah, happened to yeah. Anakin as well. And it's funny because in Mike Chen's book Brotherhood, um, which is one of the earliest novels, one of the earliest pieces of content straight after Attack of the Clones, mm -hmm. um, and it's about Obi Wan and Anakin. It's when Anakin just the start of the book is Anakin becoming a Jedi Knight, and it's all about Anakin and Obi Wan sort of dynamic and the power shift changing from the uh, you know Padawan and Master sort of level to kind of an even play. And in that, at the Jedi uh, ceremony, Anakin is thinking to himself, he's going, Mace Windu, look, give me that look again. He hates me so much. He wants me to fail. And there's all these bits where uh, Obi Wan can kind of see it a little bit, but in Anakin's head, it's much more obvious and there's people who just know the Mace Windu doesn't like Anakin it's just kind mm. of and it's the way he acts towards him he just never gives him a break and he's kind of responsible and even in um, Revenge of the Sith Mace Windu says I don't trust him he tells Yoda and Obi-Wan he's like I don't trust Anakin it's like you don't mm. trust someone who you are kind of held up to be the chosen one and you put in this position and things and you've done these things to them and you're still not trusting them and as you say you know put them on the council didn't make them a master immediately just you are worse than everyone on this council. There are people in this order who aren't on the council who are actually higher ranking and have authority over you in some ways. And it's like, the fact they did that, and you mentioned that scene with uh, Palpatine and Mace, and it's like, when Anakin executes Dooku, Palpatine, the Sith Lord, tells him to do it. He knows he shouldn't, mm. and he's got someone telling him he should. Then the tables are turned, and he's, as you say, clinging to the Jedi Order, and he's like, I don't want to do this. And then the Jedi is like, no, you, you, we can kill someone in cold blood. It's like... Mm. But he said the same thing. So if you're, if he's saying the same thing and you're saying the same thing, he can save my wife. So why would I not choose him? And although it takes, yeah. you know, it's giving Lucas a lot of credit for all these sweet things. And I think that if you had someone else probably directing it, like he did with Empire and Return of the Jedi, I think that Revenge of the Sith would be the best Star Wars movie almost unequivocally. Like mm. if, if you got like Tony Gilroy to make Revenge of the Sith, do you know what I mean? Like that sort of tension really well thought out writing and dialogue and deep feelings for characters that aren't, aren't on screen for that much time because the dialogue's so strong. If you had things like that, which obviously go to the writers as well, I think it would have worked better. But Mace Windu is a character who the more I find out about him, the more I respect him as a fighter and a warrior, but the less I agree with his ideals. He's like a very dogmatic Jedi. And so this is all about Dooku and Mace disagreeing with each other quite a lot and sort of the guards' ideologies and like the assassination attempt and things and how it all kind of goes around. So what do you think about this episode? How do you think it compared to uh, Justice? I don't... <laughs> I don't think this was quite as good. It, it didn't make it didn't um, make me think quite as much about yeah. the the virtues of the Senate and stuff like that. Again, it, it just had me doubling down a little bit that Windu's a bit of a dick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, he's kind of he, he's played a little bit of a, a good political game there, you know, and he, he's like he gets this promotion and. Dooku's asking him, well, did you know? He's like, well, nah, not really, you know, kind of, you know. Um, and again, it has me, like, caring a bit more about Dooku. He, he's in that uh, position that Anakin was, you know, where he's he's basically been fucked over by Mace Windu. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, you are a bastard, aren't you? So I don't know. I don't know if that was the intent of the episode. Um, but that's definitely how it it made me feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think that this was very much so. So the first episode was kind of like how Dooku and Qui Gon kind of start to verge on paths a little bit, but how Qui Gon was kind of being an anchor to pull him back. Then you've got him sort of older. Then you've got him sort of away from Qui Gon being the anchor. And then you've got him clashing with someone who has the very opposite ideals. Who not opposite in that way. They share the same core ideals, but it's the way that they kind of want to get there in a sense it's, it's just mace is mm. so to the rules so dogmatic he's like no we were told to go here retrieve the body and leave and duke is like but someone killed a jedi mm. we need to find out how that happened and duke is like no we don't need to know we, we don't that's not what we asked we do what we're told we we're told to get the body that's what we do not do anything else we don't need it we trust we know what we're doing and an idea when as soon as you have an ideology which you are not allowed to question that's what slowly becomes fascism because as soon as you stop yeah. people being able to ask the questions of why are we doing this, if you tell people they can't ask questions, then you don't need to tell them why you do anything. 
So therefore, you make your own rules because there's no questioning of it. And that's, that is, in a lot of ways, how the Nazis kind of came to power and how the horrendous war crimes and atrocities associated, you know, in the Holocaust and things, how people justified those elements to themselves because they just said, oh, I don't know why I'm doing this, but I'm not going to question it out of fear or social reasons of not wanting to be the only person saying no. All There's lots of different factors in it, but the a p- core part of it is just not questioning following orders and ironically that's obviously what the order 66 chip does to uh the clones which is good mm-hmm. soldiers follow orders so i love that yeah but yeah i didn't think this was quite i think of the dooku ones this was the weakest but it was still mm. i'd probably say i think i enjoyed ahsoka practice mix perfect the most of the ahsoka ones and i think this and the ahsoka so i think the best ahsoka one is probably on point with the worst dooku one both very really enjoyable but the other two Duke ones I definitely thought were a bit stronger. Yeah, I honestly I'd have all the Duku ones above the Ahsoka ones, to be mm. honest. Again, because I know it's a Duku episode, but it kind of it, it shone a light on Windu being a bit more of a political animal. Mm. And you know, he's done well by being that yes man. Mm-hmm. And and it's a great parallel to talk about, you know, there's plenty of Plenty of people in Germany in the 30s and 40s who just followed orders and did very well at following orders at that time, but they were fucking wrong. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's a really interesting parallel, you know, because we hold the Jedi in such high esteem. Uh, official, My official uh, religion is Jedi, according to one of their recent censuses. Um <laughs> <laughs> going back to the early 2000s or whatever so yeah I, I just felt that it was strong because of the windu stuff not so much because of the dooku but you you do kind of empathize with dooku and you think well yeah you got fucked over there mate fair mm-hmm. dues <laughs> i get yeah, it so, so you've got i think the three of these episodes of dooku really sh- strong show that dooku's failing with politics of the senate dooku's failings with the politics in the jedi order and then you've got amidst that you've got one person who aligns with what he wants to do but mm. not in a moral sense so mm-hmm. he just he kind of that's how dooku goes from the jedi dooku to count dooku to the sith yep. lord darth tyrannus so I, I did enjoy choices but yeah i think um it, it was cool but we move on to i think you are probably going to agree the peak of tales of the jedi and i know a lot of people online agree for every moment of this episode was absolutely incredible. I mean, I I think we should explore more characters and we'll get to that. But if they just said, look, we're going to do another Tales of the Jedi, we're going to do six Dooku episodes. I'm like, Mm. I am in. I don't give a fuck. I'll have as much Dooku as I want because this episode specifically, not just because it's cool at an action stuff, but just the emotional weight of this episode from the start where you finally you know, it's always been hinted at especially in series six of the clone wars and it gets hinted at um in other places in the canon of dooku deleting kamino it's you when you see it in attack of the clones you go oh that's weird and then they don't really ever question it that much after you find it's a clone army then in in the clone wars you find out you know sifo diaz and like he was involved with the clones but you still don't know as much in jedi dooku lost the audiobook i mentioned previously which i would say if anyone uh who enjoyed the dooku stuff in this listen to the audiobook you can go on audible get a free trial thing you get a free credit you could just listen to it um and you, when you get a credit you could buy it basically goes in your library it's amazing it's got sound effects and music and everything it's a really 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 cool audiobook the uh the uh, voice actor on it is amazing and so you get a bit more about dooku and you get some flashbacks to him and sifo diaz and their relationship and things and what happened there but you still don't know he deleted camino from the record you suspect he did but you don't know so as soon as that starts that's him interesting you get yaddle that's interesting and he said he talks to qui-gon kind of the, he talks about qui-gon and things so mm. he meets with qui-gon for the last time everyone gets mentioned and then obviously you get the little time jump in that of quite Qui- of qui-gon passing away so and then you get obviously the whole yaddle stuff following dooku so this whole episode dave tell us what you thought yeah absolutely brilliant and again i i don't because I'm not as close to the law as you and, and you know all the books and everything as well. It, it, the significance of him deleting that, it, it didn't really land with me in the same way. Um, but again, you, you what I enjoyed actually is, is just being able to place it in that time. Because mm. 
with a lot of the other episodes, it's like, well, it's kind of before the prequels ish, you yeah. know, and, and, you know, some of it, like the practice makes perfect. Obviously, that very end scene, you know, all around Order 66 and everything. But I think the fact that it was like, oh, right, okay, Qui Gon Jinn is, has been killed by Maul. Um, Dooku didn't know about him. Uh, that was another thing as well. And, you know, actually, even though he's flirting with the dark side and whatever, he's, uh, you know, in leagues with Darth Sidious, he still had, feel- he still had, you know, he still liked Qui Gon Jinn. You know, he was still his Padawan. And you've killed him, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think it just, it again, just made me empathize with Dooku's position. And, you know, Yaddle, I didn't know, to be honest, from the, you said he was in, uh, she was in something before, but. In the High Republic, it, but aside from that, it's a background character in uh, yeah. Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones. Just someone, uh, basically another Yoda on the Jedi Council with no speaking lines or anything. And then yeah. very, very little things and a few flashbacks. I think there's one flashback in the Vader comics where she has one line of dialogue. So right. yeah, in canon, not a lot. Yeah. But I mean, to have her uh come and then there's the battle and what have you you got palpatine just standing back watching it all unfold and and that was almost his complete transformation then to the dark side wasn't it and so you know again i I felt there was a lot of emotional weight to this one um so yeah I, i agree with you just fantastic episode and uh yeah probably the peak out of this six yeah, I loved it. The action scene was great. And one thing I heard Alex and Molly of Styles Explained uh, say when they spoke about this episode in a recent Q&A, um, they said that one thing they enjoyed about the adult parts was she died on her terms, mm. where she got crushed by that thing and then lifted it up and then climbed out and spoke to Dooku. And he, he had to look her in the eye when he did that. And one thing as well that Alex and Molly said, um, which I was kind of thinking beforehand, but I don't want to feel like I'm stealing it, um, but they made a good point and stuff, which was Yaddle, a vague idea of what she kind of was doing around that time was what she said in that episode, she's left the council, taking a step down. So she's basically taken the equivalent of like a sabbatical, like just taking a break, going away for a while. Uh, there's something called the Barish Vow, which is quite an interesting thing, which is in the Vader comics, uh, the Charles Saul 2017 ones. Um, and the a Jedi just goes, Look, I don't want to be a part of anything Jedi related. I'm going to go to a random mm. planet by myself and just meditate and do my own thing. Maybe I'll come back to society, but maybe never again. And there's a theory of like, oh, what if she did that? She was like, I need I need time away from all this stuff going on with the wars or the the, the build up to it and etc. Like all these things that are starting to happen in the Republic. And I'm not not agreeing with what the Jedi did. Um, so in the obviously that was Phantom Menace and stuff, but it's kind of the, the 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 fall of the Jedi is the era it's called sort of before the prequels uh, before the um, Clone Wars and you just if she died and obviously just no one knew they were just like oh yeah she's gone to do the Barish Vow on this random planet and we never see her again oh well mm. and obviously Order 66 happened after that it is sad and you see Dooku the whole time he's not happy about it he's he's I think part of me thinks that he just knows that even if they've both fought Sidious together they would have no hope. Because, like, mm. Sidious, the only person who's ever managed to even come close to going against Sidious is Mace Windu. Like, no, like Yoda fights him, and he's pretty close, but Yoda doesn't win. Like, mm. Sidious at no point really seems like he's on the ropes. There's one or two moments, but really, Yoda fails there. Anytime uh, Palpatine goes against anyone, in the Clone Wars when he goes against Darth Maul and Savage Opress at the same time, and he literally mm. completely decimates them easily. Yeah. And it's like his level of power is so great, Dooku doesn't even have a choice. That's a moment where a lot of people, and I agree on the kind of when I first was thinking about it, oh, this is, Dooku had the choice there, and he turned his back on the Jedi. And I do agree, that is what he did, but I think also part of it is just that Dooku is so intelligent, he's just like... Uh, if if we're both just going to die here, I'll have achieved nothing mm. I want to, and Palpatine's going to get away. There's no way I'm going to be able to defeat him. He even says he even speaks to Obi Wan about it, doesn't he? And it's just like <laughs> Palpatine's so powerful. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, but I think because we'd seen his journey to yeah. get there as well, you, you you know, he wouldn't have. I don't think he'd have flirted with the idea of teaming up with Yaddle and uh trying to take him on I, th- I think 
he was ready mm-hmm. and then that was just the last step wasn't it to yeah. to uh step over there closing the door fully uh so yeah. move on to uh the last two which are the ahsoka things uh so obviously it's practice makers perfect we've spoken about this quite a bit and the episode itself is actually quite simple um there's not necessarily a huge amount to talk about there's a couple of small elements which one of them was the start that i quite liked uh, he had obi-wan with the long hair again which a lot of people online were moaning about uh, <laughs> because he cuts his hair that short at the start of the clone wars and then he never has hair that short in the clone wars so they're like oh that doesn't fit in the timeline but the, mm. it's like he did actually shave his entire face and stuff at one point when he went undercover and he grew all that back immediately by like and his beard like the next episode mm. so it's like <laughs> he could probably grow out a mullet maybe this was just in between a couple of clone wars episodes that were a few months apart and he just grew out his hair again and then got it cut who knows um but we got to see caleb doom one of the greatest characters in all of Star Wars, which is obviously uh, Kanan Jarrus from Rebels. He, mm-hmm. um, his character model appeared in season seven of the Clone Wars very briefly um, with his master, Depa Balaba. Once again, they appeared in The Bad Batch as well, which obviously we discussed. And then you get to see him here again. And I just want to see any time, because Kanan's probably my favorite Jedi in all of Star Wars. Um, I absolutely adore him. So even seeing little Caleb Doom, just for a moment, made me happy did you spot that did you see the i didn't the other no where, you didn't where was he at the start when you had uh the very first scene of ahsoka defeating the droids and mm-hmm. there was yoda obi-wan uh Depa balaba caleb doom and anakin all there kind of watching her do really well and i was like yeah you did really well and then they leave and then i was like yeah but that's pretty easy let me show you something more difficult in that room uh-huh. caleb uh was there so go watch that again Dave. i right will start. i will yeah, so this episode, I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was cool. I like how you see her at the start of one lightsaber, and as time goes on, you get to see her with the two lightsabers. But again, I feel like with these episodes, the first episode, I feel like I would have almost enjoyed it if we got to see Plo Koon coming and picking her up. I think you see that in the Clone Wars in a very brief flashback, but I think I would have liked to see that in more depth. Then for this episode, I would have liked to see the same thing, but I would have liked to see her crafting a second lightsaber or making mm. the decision... I now need a second lightsaber and I'm going to go, I'm going to go off with the paddle ones and get myself a second lightsaber. That could have mm. been that little, you know, uh, alluded to the, the gathering episode with the paddle ones where they mm. get the lightsaber crystals. And that could have somewhat explain why Soka was there. Maybe something along those lines and just be like, she needs a second lightsaber. Go from there. And then the third episode, purifying a crystal. But this one still, I did enjoy it. I thought it was very cool seeing her, and it was nice that Jesse was there, the one, the clone with the like the imprint on his helmet, because he's the yeah. one. So all of that, this was my favorite Ahsoka episode by quite a lot. I found, um, but again, it, it still wasn't like phenomenal. I wasn't like, yeah, amazing. Mm. I was like, this is cool. It felt like a nice middle part. I think what I probably appreciate I, I, again watching it, I didn't really appreciate it. I was like, okay, I get it now. I don't really need to see it anymore. And then, you know, oh, you lasted 10 minutes that time. You know, it, it, it keeps getting taken out. But when you used to watch, like, films in the 80s or something, you used to, like, the the, the film Chris and I always go back to, no treat, no surrender. It's it, You can you can use it for an, anal- an analogy for anything, right? But basically, this guy, he, he's a bit shit at martial arts, uh, gets visited by the ghost of Bruce Lee, does some training, bit of a montage, and then he takes on Jean Claude Van Damme and kicks his ass, and and it leads you into believing that you can just put a good solid week in of training, <laughs> and that's it. You can go and take on Rocky or something. You know, <laughs> it's just ridiculous. So that repetitive kind of storytelling, I, I guess I appreciate that it's telling you that she didn't just luckily because she's got plot armor she didn't just luckily get out of that situation in in uh, the seventh series of, of clone wars it was through anakin's doing and anakin had nothing to do with order 66 if memory no. serves it, it yeah, was all no about, about it yeah right? so yeah so so that was all the stuff that happened with him was was after um so yeah, I, I kind of I do appreciate that. I think because even you know if I draw a parallel to Kenobi, you know he got his ass handed to him by Vader, and then by the end of the series, you know he's wiping the floor with Vader. 
but he did nothing to earn that. There was no kind of training montage. She wasn't like running up snowy mountains of Hoth or, or anything. You know, it, it, there was nothing. He just he beat Vader because he was Kenobi. And mm. because he had his plot armor on and because it, we needed our hero to win. So I guess, you know, it, it, it makes me, when I think of stuff like that, it makes me appreciate this episode more. The fact that, you know, obviously she was talented. We could see from episode one, she was in, t- in tune with the force, but it was through Anakin's mentorship that helped her, you know, craft that, uh, you know, hone that skill. And, uh, you know, makes her quite a, a talented Jedi. Mm. It shows that the first episode she had the natural gift, but then the second episode with her shows she had the determination mm. and the willingness to push herself. Because she's like, why would I ever need this or any fighting droids? And he's like, you don't mm. want to just be good enough. You need to be beyond that. And that's what makes us yeah. such an incredible character. And that's one of the key things, I think. That's That episode is a very, very big shortcut over the Clone Wars. Like the Clone Wars is amazing, and I recommend people do watch it. But it is a thing where if you don't feel like you have time, I feel like if anyone's listening to this, I imagine all of you have seen Clone Wars. If not, we've spoiled a lot of it. But if you haven't, or you <laughs> gave up on part of Clone Wars or anything like that, just watch the last four episodes of season seven of Clone Wars. Even if you've never seen Clone Wars before, but you've seen this episode, just watch the last four episodes of Clone Wars series seven. It's some of the best Star Wars that exists. It is absolutely phenomenal from start to finish. It's basically a mini Star Wars movie. It's what the Clone Wars movie basically should have been. Um, and I think the practice makes perfect is a really good uh, companion to that. Um, and anything more of Rex. I love Rex. It's main, one of the main things. It's like Bad Batch Series 2, obviously, on the horizon. I'm like, give me more Rex. Mm. One line of dialogue. I don't care. He pops up in a comic for like eight, like eight panels. And there's like, it says one thing. And I'm like, yes, Rex, do it. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, seeing him come up in Rebels, I was just like, oh. Yes, that's why Rebels is another reason why I can keep repeating that Rebels being incredible. Um, but is there anything else you want to mention about either Practice Makes Perfect or Rex before we get to the last episode? Well, just to say that because I'd watched Rebels first before Clone Wars, that, mm. that's why I kind of feel like I have to go through them again mm. because there was so much that I wasn't really pick up, picking up on. When we met Rex in Rebels, it was kind of obvious I should have known him from something else. But I didn't, you know, so uh, it was only after where it was like obvious. You you get to know those characters. And again, some of the clones that we lost as well, it's just utterly tragic. You know, the the people who are just trying to do right, the the guy who's, um, you, you know, when when they're f- unraveling the secret of the, of the chip and Fives. people have it. Yeah. He's, yeah. He's, what, he's my favorite clone. Re- Rex my favorite clone because he's, the one who keeps on going but fives yeah. was a tragic but i, I love yeah. all the fives in the in the series so so good and so tragic um so yeah i i think it, it's just talking about it it's actually making me want i don't know when i'd do it um, i've got some time coming up off work actually i might do it then <laughs> well if you wanted to i've got um you can either be a completionist again but there are i've got um a mental note of basically the the highlights of because you probably don't want to rewatch all of season one of Clone Wars. There's probably there's about six or seven episodes. There's a couple of grievous ones. There's the Ryloth arc, and then there's the finale, and there's also the rookies episode about Domino Squad. But apart from maybe the Hondo episode that's like introduces Hondo, there's not that much to it. But what once you get to season four, it's like I want to do a rewatch of Clone Wars. But me and Megan already watch are watching so much other content. There's so much Star Wars. It's hard to convince her to watch all the Marvel stuff, all the Star Wars <laughs> yeah. stuff, and then also go back and watch even more. And I'm, when Ahsoka comes out, I am going to convince Megan. I'm going to say, can we just have a Sunday and just have a few hours? And we're just going to choose the, the highlight Ahsoka episodes, just the best ones. I need to watch the finale of season seven again, mm. um, but and the finale of uh, season two of Rebels, but just a bit, just the highlights, because there, there are just so many cool episodes in, in Clone Wars that I love. Um, so if you do go back to it, let me know. And I can either give you a little list or you can say, nope, I'm just going to watch them all. And I'd, I'd respect you for that, but I'd probably say skip the movie because Me- Megan was mad oh. at me for making her watch the movie because I tell people to skip it now. And she's like, why do you tell them to skip it? I had to suffer through it. Yeah. <laughs> I have watched it once 
That is enough. I don't, I don't ever need to see that again. It's the worst but piece the, of Star Wars content in the canon, I'd say. Yeah, the series, I, I'm kind of a completionist. So I, I, if I was going to go through the series again, I, I wouldn't just pick the highlights. You know, yes. for me, it's like, if you're going to listen to music, listen to the album. That was yeah. how, you know, it was, it was designed. It, don't listen to the greatest hits. Yeah. So you never watch just little clips of things on YouTube, do you, Dave? Well, of course I do that. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously, the thing is with that is, is linking with the music analogy. You can't ever just not listen to a single. Okay, like I listen to whole albums, but occasionally you're just like, I just want to hear this one song by this band. It's like, you shouldn't mm. have to suffer through a whole album if you want to just, just get that little hit occasionally. But yeah, when you do a big rewatch, you do, um, do want to watch them all. And I respect that. Um, and obviously got Bad Batch coming up, so it tie in nicely. Mm. So the finale uh, episode, the one that I wasn't as keen on, um was resolved so it starts at, um you get bale organa and mon mothma mon mothma one of the highlights of andor uh at padme's wedding which is obviously amazing to see really nice at wedding her funeral i don't know if i said wedding jesus the opposite of a wedding <laughs> uh at her funeral and you obviously see ahsoka there and then you get a bit of interaction between ahsoka and bale uh, which is nice and then obviously she goes to a planet she disguises herself as ashla um which is also another name for the light side of the force um and that's actually originally one of the names that George Lucas was going to give uh, to the light side of the force and to the force itself. Um, so Ashley is also, uh, the idea is going to be like a, b- before uh, even the Mordis gods of the force and things like that, it was like Ashley was potentially the purest form of the light side, which is quite a nice idea that Ahsoka is in a lot of ways the personification of the light side of the force. And in the Ahsoka novel that I mentioned earlier, it does get mentioned quite a lot in that. And I do recommend people pick up that novel because it is really good. You get a lot more Ahsoka content in there as well. Uh, you get her uh, purifying her lightsabers and things like that, which is a really important moment in Ahsoka's life. And I'm quite sad we didn't get to see that. Uh, and then you get, a, she goes against the Inquisitor, which I thought was cool. Uh, the Inquisitor model was good, but it was just, it was so fast. It was like, oh, it's a bad guy and he's dead. Okay. And then she goes to the rebellion. It's like a bit quick for me, but that's because I kind of knew what was coming in certain ways when things start to happen. But with you going in with fresh eyes with no idea, and I don't believe that you've read the Ahsoka novel. So what did you uh, think? Yeah. So I actually thought, is that some sort of grievous sort of mm. spin off? I, 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 obviously he turned out to just be an inquisitor, but he, like the, design of him and everything it just reminded me of grievous and i'm like that doesn't really fit with the timeline so yeah that's why <laughs> uh but no i thought i thought this was okay again i think it's almost like we, we've seen ahsoka in live action now hmm. so we, we've seen a uh, pop up in mandalorian so we know she's kind of she's been out hiding Again, I'm left wondering, well, why is, uh, oh, oh, why have we got this series, uh, not series, but this episode? What What is it telling us that we didn't know before? So, you know, you would think after Order 66 and everything and the politics, so the Empire are basically villainizing the Jedi. So most people... All of us are, are pretty much like sheep, aren't we? You know, so the media just plows you with, uh, or plows you with all of this misinformation about the Jedi and how they were plotting to overthrow the Senate and this that, and the other. So, if if you were an average schmo, you probably would be thinking like, "Well, the Jedi, they're they're evil, aren't they? They're trying to overthrow the the Senate." Thank God for the Empire. That that is what most people would think. So you know the fact that the little fellow rats them rats Ahsoka out is is one, but then it doesn't really make sense that they're trying to rescue her as well. And also, if you got these heroic Jedi just doing these heroic things, it makes it less likely that they wouldn't be caught. Mm-hmm. If you know what I mean. Yeah, it, it kind of that plausibility kind of goes out the window a little bit. So I, I'm not going to think too deeply about it, but I would prefer if you know, like a lot of the force use in those early movies, it was all very much implied. Hmm. You know, like you don't need to see our identification. Fucking hell, he's using the force there. <laughs> Whereas you don't need to see 
the, these massive special effects and you know moving things with your mind and all that uh sort of jazz so yeah i again for me it was just a, a an okay episode i enjoyed watching it but just didn't really add anything for me that i didn't know before i don't think yeah it doesn't it, for me it just it's once again just one of those things where it's like yeah ahsoka she can handle herself against inquisitors and against this and against that so if you haven't seen clone wars or rebels or whatever or if you haven't done this then you get an idea but it's just like in the ahsoka novel the vast majority of it she's on that planet she's there for ages she like gets a connection and makes a, like friends and stuff and she hides her use of the force for quite a while i think it's several weeks um she's on there if not maybe even a couple of months no one knows really anything about her she's there for a, a, lo- a long time and she really doesn't want to use the force and the only time she does i can't remember if it's in the same way but she uses it to save someone's life but then really has to hide it and then the inquisitor comes down and her and all these people have to try and hide and it's all this there's a lot to ahsoka trying to find her place in the universe and in this it was just kind of like yeah ahsoka's wearing a hood up or ahsoka's just calling herself ashler and she's just kind of living her life oh yeah someone almost gets crushed by a few bits of hay she saved them immediately and Krista shows up she fights it beats it wins now that she's with bail organa and she's in the rebellion thumbs up gone and you're like that all happened in in about what 15 minutes it's like the book's like a few hundred pages like that takes several hours to read uh, the audiobook is i think six or seven hours as well this was done in like 15 minutes and mm. it's like i really thought the reason behind it was going to be to show us how she got her lightsaber crystals that's what i thought and i was like that is a good enough reason if i have to skip over this big inquisitor battle and her hearing the lightsaber crystals call to her and all these elements of the book that i found interesting if they're going to just skip over this just so i can see live action uh purification of crystals i would love that because we've not seen lightsaber crystal bleeding anywhere apart from the comics and we've only heard about the uh purifying of a, of a lightsaber crystal in the books there's a bit in the high republic a bit in the shadows of the sith um where luke does it and ahsoka as well so i was like oh, that'd be so cool to see so many fans who won't have ever even known what that is to find out mm. how ahsoka got our white lightsabers and like oh yeah we're doing that story but we're cutting it two chapters before but why why did you bother doing it we know ahsoka can fight <laughs> really well yeah. it just kind of felt like they were putting the fight in just to kind of be like oh okay we've done the origin of ahsoka we've done her practicing now we need to show her being strong and powerful so it's like mm. for people who actually really like her it feels a bit weak but i feel like maybe people who didn't know about it who've kind of because the clone wars because clone wars and i think a lot of it rebels came out before disney plus i think a lot of people just haven't bothered going back to it i think a lot of people are just like oh new Star Wars content i'm going to keep up to date with it. i'm going to watch mando mm-hmm. and maybe and or things like that i don't think a lot of people they look at clone wars and they go okay you watch the movie and it's not very good, which puts off probably half the potential people. You watch, you get people watch the first three episodes of Clone Wars Series 1. That probably cuts off another half of them again. And then also there's a big chunk of people probably look at it and go, seven seasons. And then they look at it and it's 24 episodes from seasons, I think it's, I think it's season one to five. They're all 20-something episodes. Yeah. I know that's 20 minutes long, it only, you know, really equates to about six hours, which isn't actually that long. That many episodes, you look at 24, you go, Jesus Christ, that's so many hours of Star Wars. And you start it first, and you're like, this feels a bit young. And so I think this is maybe a shortcut for them. But I, the only kind of part of that that I'm kind of happy about, I'm just thinking, are we going to get lightsaber crystal purification in the Ahsoka series? And I'm like, that's going to be the perfect time. If they did a flashback and they had someone else play young Ahsoka, but voiced by Ashley Eckstein, who did it in um, obviously Clone Wars, I would love to see a live action lightsaber purification. Oof. I, I want to see a bleeding more than anything because the bleeding you see in the Darth Vader comics. I, I was just thinking, uh, yeah, the purification would, would be great to see the bleeding live action that that would be absolutely amazing like if they uh, just think how well they could do that they could basically dedicate a whole episode to that with all of the kind of flashbacks and the alternate realities and dreams and all that sort of stuff and just channeling all of that hatred and all of those uh, uh nasty evil thoughts fucking brilliant sign me up <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah it's like i wouldn't want a vader movie or a vader series necessarily if you said if you said i i have the power at disney i'd be like no don't don't bother you know I, it's just 
I wouldn't necessarily, of all the stories you could tell, I think you need to step away from, you know, Vader, that everyone knows exactly what's going to happen to him, stuff, blah. But if they did do a Vader series for some reason, mm. oh, and they did a lightsaber bleeding, I'd be like, you know, I love the comics, obviously, dearly, you know, you've read them as well, and it's one of the highlights of any Star Wars comic is Vader bleeding his lightsaber crystal. But in live action, it's a whole nother ball game. It's a whole nother level. And so if that's one of the best moments in comics, imagine what it could be in a series or a movie. Of just yeah. that, uh, if you pitch to me a Darth Vader series, you could almost just say, we're going to end it with lightsaber bleeding or that's going to be like the penultimate episode. I'd be like, I don't really care what else you do with it. I'm in. <laughs> as long as that's the condition. Yeah. Sounds almost like a euphemism, doesn't it? Yeah, for people like who don't know, lightsaber crystal. It's how in the canon people turn uh, a, a lightsaber. The idea is a Sith is meant to kill a Jedi, and then you you get the crystal, and then you put all your dark side energy into it, and all your suffering, all your bad juju, and then it, it you know, bl- it, because a lightsaber crystal, a kyber crystal, is a living being in a sense. It's like part of the Force, and it's alive. You hurt it, and that's what makes it bleed. Um, apparently. Um, but Legends a bit different, but I'm not going to delve into that. Mm. I think you make a, a great point, though. Maybe maybe I'm looking at the Ahsoka stuff wrong. Maybe it is more... So Dooku, it progresses character. You know, we know now more about Dooku, and certainly I do, and uh, can empathize and understand where he's coming from more than just being this mustache twirling villain. As great as Christopher Lee is. With Ahsoka, maybe it's just a shortcut to get up to speed with Ahsoka. So she's born. She very early on showed that she's in tune with the Force. She got to be good at what she does uh, through hard training, and it was Darth Vader who trained her up. And then, you know, she was in hiding, but and she killed an Inquisitor. Uh in come the Ahsoka series. Maybe it's that. So maybe for people who love the character and already know all that shit, it's sort of redundant. But you know, it's yeah. not that it's not that you can't still enjoy it. It just for me, I'm looking for what were you telling me that that I didn't know before. Mm-hmm. So I've got two more points before we wrap this up. Um, one of them is a slightly bigger point, so we've still got time to talk about that. But one of them is uh, basically rating. And I think that if we rated, uh, I don't normally do this, but the Ahsoka series and the Dooku, the, the Ahsoka episodes and the Dooku one separately. Uh, and then I just want to talk about sort of what other characters we'd like to explore in a similar sort of format. So for me personally, I think the Ahsoka series, the Ahsoka episodes as a whole out of 10 is probably only a six and a half for me of just like, they're good. They're still worth a watch, but it's not like essential Star Wars watching for anyone, really. Really, as I said, the only reason I could say to these people is, yeah, if you don't want to invest all the time in Clone Wars, but you want to watch the Ahsoka series, it's probably an all right way to kind of skip over stuff. But I think you're probably doing yourself a disservice because there is actually a section on Disney+, Plus, which is the Ahsoka collection. And it's best episodes of Ahsoka in the Clone Wars. It's got a couple of one-off episodes. There's one where she meets Chewie, which is quite cool. But then there's also... Uh, the Mandalorian episodes that link with, you know, act- as in link with Bo-Katan as we see in uh, season two of The Mandalorian. So I would say if you want to kind of do that, you can get a better feel for things rather than this. But for me, it's six and a half. But I think Dooku stuff, I think for me, it's probably probably an eight and a half, I think. I think that's... The Dooku stuff is the kind of things I love about The Clone Wars, is that if you're going to do a prequel, you're going to do it about a character, it needs to there needs to be a reason for it you need to feel something you need to see something new we know what happened to yaddle which is really cool we get a bit of qui-gon which is good we see the political discourse in uh the mind of dooku and one of the things that led for anakin so that's me personally how did you feel uh, about each of these things kind of uh individually as characters as a whole yeah so i'm on the same page with the dooku stuff i think eight and a half i think again it does what the clone wars and rebels well, I'm going to say Clone Wars more because you you don't need to sell me on the original trilogy and the you know the the um, rebellion and all that sort of stuff. So eight and a half for Dooku definitely should watch those three episodes. 
I, I'm going to be a little bit more harsh on the Ahsoka stuff, just because I, I don't see what it added mm -hmm. at all, other than just giving us some stuff with Ahsoka. Mm -hmm. So I'd say it was more like a, a four or a five for me. Mm -hmm. I think I, 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 I don't feel like I need to ever watch them again. I watched all these twice, by the way, just to I watched them as soon as they came out and then before coming on here as well. And what I realized was I didn't really remember much at all about the Ahsoka episodes. And it was only when I watched them again, I was like, oh, right, yeah, yeah, I remember now. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think... Uh, but there is a caveat to this. So if you haven't watched The Clone Wars, then it's higher. It's probably worth watching. You know, yeah. and you just want to kind of a shortcut to get to know a little bit more about Ahsoka because we met her in Mandalorian live action, but you know, you didn't really find out that much about her there. So yeah, it, it will be worthwhile. So, so for someone like that, probably, you know, it'd be more of a, a six or a seven. Um, but yeah, just, just for me, I, I just don't need to see it again. Yeah. For me, it's kind of equals where life and death was probably a six. And then practice makes perfect was probably like a seven and a half. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. But then resolve was like four, five. So they, mm. they kind of even to a six, but it's like that last episode. Just the Padme funeral was kind of the highlight. The the rest of it, as I said, I think yeah. it was just I think it was also a waste Ahsoka killing an Inquisitor like that, because I'm like, if you're gonna keep doing <laughs> stuff with like the Bad Batch, why not if you make someone look that cool with that mask? Put them in the Bad Batch. Mm. Have them pursuing the Bad Batch and have, have the Bad yeah. Batch intertwine with Ahsoka a little bit, maybe, uh, if or anything like that. Have have some sort of... I mean, there's this... I know that some people are listening, uh, if Tonya's listening to this. I mean, there's... I'm going to say something. It's in the Bad Batch Series 2 trailer. So skip ahead by about 30 seconds, just to warn. Um, but there's a character who's a Wookiee Jedi Padawan, um, whose name I always miss. Uh, and they are in the Clone Wars Gathering episode. Um, they're Wookiee Jedi Padawan and they're going to be in Series 2 of The Bad Batch and I'm like if they had an Inquisitor that Inquisitor pursuing it's, it's, like, it's not Melchi because that's bloody Melchi is Andor but it's something like that um, Gel Gulgi or something uh, oh, someone's going to be screaming Gunji Gunji the Wookiee Padawan that's it I think um, we're going to be seeing them and it's like that Inquisitor could be so well used elsewhere but no, it was just just a bit weak. So uh, <laughs> leading on with that little uh, caveat, that little tangent, Tales of the Jedi. Dave, I control Disney. I'm going to make you the new CEO. And the first thing you're going to do is do stuff for Lucas, Lucasfilm. You get to decide the next... We're going to do three, uh, two more series of Tales of the Jedi. So we're going to do another four Jedi characters. Who would you want to see if you could? If four's too many, you could say less than that. But any oh, characters, it doesn't have to be in the prequel era. It can be across the whole of Star Wars that you know of. Are there any that really call out to you that you'd want to see, like, about an hour or so of animated content for? So not... Oh, crikey. Four's a lot. Let's do this. Th this is... Well, no, this, this is one... If you'd have given me a heads up, I could have really thought about this. I'm, but, I, I'm sorry, well, I, I only wrote it down like earlier, about an hour before we chatted. I was like, that might be a good thing to do. Right. So I do apologise. I, did, I didn't. I haven't been like, yes, Dave's got no idea. I've been planning for weeks. No. <laughs> I only thought about it last week. I have myself. my notes and <laughs> I, I've thought this through. I started down with a list of 15. And now <laughs> I've got it down to four. Um, right. So I, I would think anyone who from clone wars or the actual series itself was portrayed as something like two dimensional mm -hmm. you know it's what's interesting is we're getting spoil slight spoilers for andor but we're getting a bit of Saul Guerrero, aren't we mm. you know and he kind of is almost like a cameo in all these different things and you get to see him uh progress but in like a non-linear way like we'll meet him like in Rogue One where he's batshit crazy and you know but we see him uh, younger in the animated stuff so maybe maybe a bit more of him possibly um, Rex you know would be a good one wouldn't he you know just following his journey and, and I, what I like is 
you know, as much as I love the original Star Wars now called A New Hope, um, it kind of makes it all like Luke Skywalker. You know, he's just the little shit that just comes in and takes the glory shot, isn't he? You know, right at the end. But this whole rebellion... You know, the the resistance had been there for ages. They were, the, you know, all these people were amassed, organized. They had all of these uh, settlements and everything. And he just comes in there and he's like, look, I can bullseye T uh, one rats in my T16 back home. Who the fuck are you? <laughs> <laughs> so maybe that guy. Maybe I'd want to learn more about that guy. He, you know, he is at, in a certain point of view book. He does, oh, there really? is actually the character who's like, who's like, <laughs> how dare he come in here and do that? I can't believe he. And the guy who like really negatively a- reacted to Luke Skywalker, he does have a story, and you actually hear him go, "Who is this farm boy coming in here?" Like, right. and, and he goes and talks to his friends about it, and he's like, "I can't believe." It. And then a story after that's about a different <laughs> rebel, and he's like, "I can't believe what's his face got so annoyed by that Luke guy." And then it's like when the Death Star thing happens, it's kind of like that insinuation. It's like, but he's eating his words now. <laughs> 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 well you've taken my next one which is that guy uh you know and i just like to think that he just really took offense to that whole interaction and he fucking hates luke skywalker with a passion so even though he's the glory boy this guy fucking hates him <laughs> like, just to all his mates he's like oh look fucking shot down the death star yeah fucking man i could have shot i could have taken <laughs> that shot <laughs> um who else i mean grievous yeah he's he's a bit one he's a bit two-dimensional isn't he i think you maybe know maybe exploring his, him yeah because maybe seeing his like because he's he was a species that escapes uh, me at the moment um but they are like a warrior species and in legends he had a lot more because they flushed out his character a lot you know when uh, Clone Wars came out. There's a few years of really intense, quite dark ca- uh, content for characters like Grievous, Quinlan Voss, and other characters like that in mm. a lot of the comics and in the Clone Wars micro series. There's a bit of it as well. So it was like before the Legends canon reset, you got a bit more about Grievous. But in the canon, there's the one episode which is Lair of Grievous, which is one of the standouts from season one of Clone Wars, where you just see statues of his species before, and then you find out sort of him going under cybernetics like enhancement and i think they very heavily hint in canon that he slowly changed himself because he couldn't use the force to become more robotic and it's like mm. you could if you had a story like that kind of almost like in the vein of saul guerrero as you're saying with three episodes of grievous where you've got him as a warrior and then he gets bested mm. by a jedi he's like a warrior he's like the top of his i think they did this a bit in legends but he's like top of his town and stuff like best in the war in the village and then he goes off and fights a jedi and loses and he loses an arm or something, gets cybernetics. Then he fights another Jedi and almost beats him because of the cybernetic arm, but still loses. And then the last thing is him changing himself completely. And him mm. kind of it'd be like the waking up in like this thing, and you'd be like him struggling to feel himself. You could go quite a dark route without it being unsuitable for the audiences of Clone Wars. You know what I mean? Mm. Like you if you yeah, were yeah. graphic with gore and stuff, which blood I don't think would work in the animation style of Clone Wars very well, but I think Grievous would be a really good idea, actually. Mm, I think that'd work. And look, one of the reasons I I really like Mandalorian was Grogu. You mm. know, I was like, "Fuck you, Disney!" I know you're throwing this like cute little thing, and I, I hate you for it. But I love the little cute bugger. Um, we saw a little bit about his escape from mm. Order sixty six. I kind of want to see more of that. You know, and that's a good and, shout. Did he speak before? You know, was it like a trauma thing? Did he, you know, he's 50. I know it's young for the species, but you'd think he'd master how to speak. Um, Did the whole, like, trauma of Order 66 make him clam up? Or uh, or what? So, yeah, seeing Grogu explored a bit, I think that would be good. That's a good idea. That, that could really work in, because then you wouldn't have to have that question of, is he going to talk like Yad or Yoda? He just does, and it would work with the Mando because Matt obviously Din Djarin doesn't really talk very much, so it would also work because it would be like not only did he lose his voice, but he's also been with someone who's a man of few words. Whereas if you're around someone a lot who talks a lot, there's a chance that you would 
be- you talk a lot more, especially if you are that young kind of child. Mm. I think the idea with like Yoda species is they live about 10 years younger. You know, he dies of old age at about 900. So yeah. that's kind of the idea that he's equivalent of like a 90 year old, which makes sense. Mm. And when he was in the prequels, he was like an 80 something year old. And it's like, mm-hmm. okay, you can, you can see that kind of his last bout of energy and things. And in the, the high Republic, it goes back to when he was like 700 and he's still quite old he was definitely like a 70 year old but he mm. was like a little bit of color in his hair left so i think grogu would be cool yeah so is that you're going for rex the guy who hates luke skywalker grogu yep. and grievous yep those nice. are my four nice <laughs> the good shouts i think i mean quinlan voss is definitely my number one um because obviously we saw him a bit in the clone wars his name drop was in kenobi he's in the dark disciple book which is really good really recommend the audiobook of that as well uh, i did a review of it so if anyone wants to know the general storyline and plot line listen oh, to that he's the kind of dreadlocks and he's got the yellow yeah. stripe on his nose and he's he a badass stuff. isn't he yeah he yeah, gets, there's yeah, a yeah. kenobi arc with him and he he has psychometry so he touches stuff and he can kind of he has like a mini force vision of the the last person mm-hmm. who touched it, things like that. In Legends, he he has a lot of stuff going on. He loses his memory. He goes into like the dark side for a bit and comes back. There's loads of stuff of Quinlan that's really interesting. They touch a little bit of Dark Disciple, but because they name dropped in Kenobi, I'm like, I hope he. I think he's going to appear in Bad Batch. I think he's going to mm. be. They've already got his character model from Clone Wars. They need to tweak it a little bit. And they mentioned him doing the path in Kenobi, which is about halfway between. Uh, Revenge of the Sith and New Hope so it's like Bad Batch the starting series of Bad Batch was like the first year after Order 66 and then I think they're going to probably span a bit more so it's like maybe a few years more as the Bad Batch start to get older and we go near Rebels territory maybe maybe we'll get Quinlan or maybe he'll appear in Ahsoka show and he'll have just survived this whole time I don't care I just want mm. Quinlan Voss stuff um, or maybe that's what they'll do he'll appear in Ahsoka and then they'll do a Quinlan Voss Tales of the Jedi that'd be cool um then I think um, I quite like Plo Koon. He's quite cool. I'd like obviously the person who discovered Ahsoka. More prequel. I love prequel era Jedi. I just think they're cool. Mm. So I, I want to see some of that stuff. Um, there's a couple of High Republic characters I'd really like to see because I just love the High Republic, obviously. Um, so I, I love Elzar Man. But they're not going to do. They're not going to touch that till the High Republic's kind of done. They are doing a, a Young Jedi Adventures animated series about the High Republic um, that's going to be coming out. But um, I don't know when in the High Republic that's set because the High Republic is quite a it's like a 150 year or 200 ish year period. And that's set that ends about a hundred years before Phantom Menace. That's ages ago and all book and comic characters and stuff. Um, so there's lots from there, but I won't going to go into them, uh, because it won't be as exciting. Um, but I think that I would really like some post episode nine stuff. I'd love a Finn tales of the Jedi. I think they did Finn such a disservice in the sequel, uh, trilogy. I think the John Boy is incredible. Um, I think the only thing they improved with Finn in episode nine is his hair. His hair looks amazing, but <laughs> his character is so boring. And it's like, he they basically were hinting, oh, he knows he can use the force. It's like, well, why didn't he save someone's life with the force? Why didn't he do something cool? Why wasn't he falling off the edge of that thing? And then he used the force to, to kind of, you know, grab something or he held onto like a rope as he fell. And as that woman who was with him fell, he used the force to hold her in place as the Falcon comes blown and saves them. Why didn't he have a cool moment like that? They're like, Oh, he's kind of saying something to Ray. Maybe he loves her. Maybe it's the force. And then JJ came out and was like, Oh no, it's love. It's, it, oh no, it's the force. It's like, well, why don't you make it more bloody obvious apart from, I just hear stuff a bit. It's like, get some John, Bo- like, I know he probably wouldn't do the voice acting for it, but it's like, get Finn animated Finn post episode nine with Ray. I, I would love that, you know, although the sequel trilogy as a trilogy is probably my least favorite of the three, I still love the trilogy, still love the characters, and I, I would love to see more Finn, or even Rey, I'd like to see Rey in between, mm. a bit more in between episode eight and nine, see how she went from, you know, someone who'd only held a lightsaber for about a week from between over the course of two films, and then a year later she's, you know, levitating on her cross-legged in the air mm. with rocks all flying around her. Let's get some Leia training. Let's get Leia training her a bit more as we kind of saw. Let's get a Leia one. How cool would that be? We get to flush mm-hmm. out like Rise of Skywalker had the seeds of so many cool things, and then they were just like, oh no, this is the end, and we're not touching it ever again. It's like Leia would be so cool to see Luke training Leia as a, and her kind of her tale as a Jedi, her kind of first. Mm experience having force sensitivity as a kid even before she found out about luke and stuff maybe just the young leia we get we get a bit more of that kind of stuff because obviously we've got some young leia in kenobi but 
just hint more stronger hints of the force that would be cool and her development yeah. and then her choosing to not use the powers and be a a political figure instead in a more in-depth way than we got in rise of skywalker they they almost to me though tales of the jedi and and i i don't know whether this isn't intentional but i guess my mind is more that it's more around the clone wars sort of space yeah. so you know it's it's almost a companion to the prequels mm. and i just wonder you know it seems like most people love the prequels now whereas <laughs> before when they came out everyone was like god this is the worst thing you've done to to star wars and then the sequels come out it's like god these are rubbish <laughs> the prequels great <laughs> i've always loved them all. So, yeah so i i don't know do, do you just have to give it 20 years and then and then it's great um oh, I'm, I'm sure i heard like literally it was a couple of months ago or something jj abrams was he came out and said like he had no idea how he's gonna finish it i'm like you fucking bellend just keep <laughs> that sort of shit to yourself i mean we all kind of know it but at least act like there was a plan you know and it, it just I'm not one of these who's like, oh, remove it from the canon and stuff. It's it's done now, but it, it's such a, a massive letdown when you realize there was no fucking plan. Mm. Um, but if I separate from okay, these kind of animated shows and more around, you know, the the prequels and then sort of leading into the, uh, a new hope. If you started to explore the sequels. You could actually do the same as what Clone Wars did for the prequels, couldn't you? Yeah. You know, the whole thing with Luke Skywalker, you know, he's hell bent on, you know, Darth Vader. You are basically space Hitler, but there is good in you. Um, you know, <laughs> this was a meme, wasn't there? When uh, Kylo Ren's like, I had a bad dream. You must die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so maybe. You know, having some animated shows which explored that, and in the same way that Clone Wars made Anakin's descent make sense, mm -hmm. maybe you could make some of that shit in the sequels make sense as well. Mm. The Kylo Ren would be very, very cool. Mm. Like, because like, there's the Rise of Kylo Ren comic, which I really enjoy, and it is cool, but it's it's very cool for a comic, but it doesn't fully explore. It's like that is almost like there's a tipping point for Kylo, mm. but it's not, there wasn't a specific tipping point, just that the tipping point was actually Last Jedi when Luke was kind of standing over him, but we don't really get much more than that. And Ben, we get bits and pieces of Ben. In Shadow of the Sith, we get a little bit. And then the Rise of Kylo Ren comic, you get a little bit as well. And then in one other sequel era book, it's either Bloodline or something like that. There's one other, uh, of the Age of, Age of Republic Snoke, so I can't. There's a little bit more where you get some of Kylo Ren before, but it's it's not a lot. It's probably five comics worth, and four of them the Rise of Kylo Ren, and that's from what you could do with a Tales of the Jedi. I think you could work really well, and I think the sequel trilogy it needs more supporting content around it. But the books they've been releasing are not enough, and I think the, the one of my biggest issues with the sequel trilogy, aside from obviously the plan, which was the biggest problem, is that it all takes place over a year, and it's like mm. the the year is the shortest gap between any of the films in the other six. You mm. get a 10-year time jump, a three-year time jump, a 19-year time jump, a three-year time jump, and a one-year time jump. That's right. It starts, it's 10, yeah, 10, 3, 19, uh, 3, 1. And then you get a 30-year jump, and that was a good shout. Mm. And then they went Force Awakens. Let's have Last Jedi start within, like, hours of... Mm. Th and you're like, wait, well, so two films take place in the space of about a week yeah that's two-thirds of the trilogy in in the other two it had been the span of 10 years or four years so it's just the amount of character growth is so limited and then the last one's like oh yeah just a year later because we've kind of written mm. ourselves into a corner it's like some extra content around it because you've got the resi resistance but i always i don't recommend that to people if you're a completionist like mm. i am check out Wars resistance if you want series two's all right series one's pretty weak for the most part but it's just about these pilots. It has no real connection to it. And they're kind of limited by what the sequels are doing because they weren't, once again, because they didn't have a plan, they couldn't really do anything exciting with the plot because they didn't know how the films were going to end. So yeah, it's um, it's a shame really. But I'm hoping that as time goes on, when the new films come out, they're going to do episode 10 or 11 or whatever like that. I'm hoping once they do some a time jump ahead, whether it's going to be five years, 10 years, 20 years, 
Mm. They'll then do something in the middle. Because I think we need more content between episode six and seven, and that's where we'll get rid of the Mandoverse. But then I'm like, cool. Post episode nine, and around that, then we can kind of bridge the gap. We can see stuff leading up to mm. episode seven. I think that would work really well. Um, so, Dave, is there anything else you want to talk about to do with Tales of the Jedi, uh, to do with anything else Star Wars before we wrap this up? No, I, I, well, I say no, and then immediately contradict myself and say yes. So <laughs> the other, the other one that I'd like maybe explored a bit is probably Snoke. You, you mentioned Snoke there, mm. but the fact that he was so damn powerful, but didn't realize that he was being, you know, double crossed in that moment it's like mm. again doesn't make sense there, there has to be some kind of uh explanation from that somewhere but uh no i, I think i think we've done well for six 20 minute episodes <laughs> we've been going for almost as long as the episode so no i think it's been a really good chat it's it's probably made me appreciate the episodes a little bit more than i did just going through them like I say, it's not changed my mind on the Ahsoka stuff. I'm not trying to put people off. I think if you haven't watched Clone Wars, it's definitely a good companion. It's a good appetite wetter to go into the Ahsoka series. Um, An order. teaches you a bit. And just, yeah, cheeky little order. Don't watch the Clone Wars uh, opening unless you've got four-year-old children. They, they might enjoy it. But uh, no, it's been really good. Really enjoyed it. Wonderful. I'm glad that uh, you managed to watch it and that we could uh, chat about it and things. Very exciting. Um, obviously, we are going to be talking again. Uh, for us, re- releasing-wise, actually, I think it's we're recording this first, but I think the next thing we record is going to be released first. Uh, so mm. we're going to be uh, should be chatting Andor in a few days' time as well. Um, but obviously, you came on a previous Andor episode as well, which you had a great old time chatting, which was cool. So in any case, even if you can't make it for any reason, then it's still... We've had a nice little chat about that. Just a quick, for next year and the things to come, if Tonya's listening or anyone else who doesn't want to know what's on the palette or the plate, uh, <laughs> li- turn, your, turn it off here. Go rate, and, well, rate us five stars, share with your friends. But this is we're just going to very quickly ask Dave about uh, in the future. So we've got uh, Bad Batch Series 2, mm-hmm. Ahsoka, um, Mando Series 3. We've got something called Skeleton Crew, um, which I don't know if you know anything about. It's a live action nope. series with Jude Law and it's about him with a crew of children who get stranded somewhere. Um, so people don't know what that is. There's rumors that could even be uh, with Harris and Dula's son, uh, Jason. Um, there's hints maybe it's going to be then because it could be set after then. There's a Rogue Squadron film that keeps getting pushed back. Um, is there what style? And there's the Acolyte series that's just started filming as well. And obviously Andor series two. Obviously, you're not seeing the finale of Andor yet because it's not out. What piece of Star Wars content for the next year or couple of years, what's the one thing you're the most excited for? I think Mandalorian. I I love it. I just love the kind of wolf and cub thing that they've got going there. Love Grogu. Love Mando. I love the whole Western vibe. I I love the style where it's kind of like, yes, it's... It's episodic. It, it, it has an arc in the series, but actually you could just want, watch one episode and it's like the old style of uh, TV where you just watch the episode as like Star Trek or something and it's got a start, middle and end. It's not just joining and helping you get to the next episode. Mm-hmm. So I love that. Really uh, looking forward to Ahsoka. I, I think, you know... <laughs> If the animated stuff, like if Clone Wars was live action, then it, it for me it would be even better. It, I can get over the animated stuff, but there's just something in my brain that is still still not quite as good as live action. I, I prefer watching live action, but um, I do as well. Yeah, I'm cautiously optimistic about Mando as well because had Boba Fett or the book of Boba Fett not happened, uh, I'd probably be more excited about that. But mm. I, I'm still perplexed as to why was that so bad, apart <laughs> from the two Mando episodes. It's like, it makes no sense. Um, yeah, you, what they did was they made a character that had this aura 
and made him worse, really. Yeah. Um, they just made him a bit of a pussy, didn't they? Especially his <laughs> badass. And then they made him worse. He, he got railroaded by everyone. Yeah. So, I mean, Ferrick yeah. Shannon is even cooler than anyone could have ever imagined. She's an unfathomable yeah. badass. And then Boba Fett's like, not really. He's all right. Yeah, he's, he's rubbish, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah. Uh, but no, still, still looking forward to Mandalorian. Um, uh, Bad Batch. I, I, I kind of sort of enjoyed that, but I didn't really enjoy it as much as the the Clone Wars or Rebels. To be mm-hmm. honest, I, I just thought it was okay. Yeah. Um, and as for the what was the other one, the Skeleton Crew? Yeah, they've only got like one picture of that out yet. But yeah, I think it's going to be two years time. I think I, I mean, I'm not going to invest too much thought into whether, you know, I'm really looking forward to that. Cause like, if you'd have mentioned this, the premise to Andor, it's like, oh, it's going to explore, you know, this, this one guy who's one of the ensemble cast in Rogue One. All right. Okay. Fair enough. I'll, I'll watch it because it's Star Wars, but not massively chomping at the bit to, to watch it. Same. And it's the best fucking thing they've done. So, you know, so it, I, I, I don't know. I'm just going to let them do their thing. It, it seems to me that they're, they're finding their feet, you know, with, with Star Wars a bit. They wanted to get the, the sequel trilogy out, but with all of this other content as well. I mean, D- Dave Filoni's the, the savior of that side of things, isn't he? Andor's a completely different story, though. And I think... Sometimes you can't predict like three or four steps. You know, what are the next three or four things that that are going to come that are going to be really good? I think what Andor will do, it will unlock a path to show people, oh shit, we can we can tell really good stories. It just happens to be in the Star Wars universe, but I've got this really cool story. And I want to tell it. And let's face it, do I want to try and pitch my indie movie? Or <laughs> can, can we uh, get Disney to buy up and, and do this story in the Star Wars universe? So I'm hoping Andor does unlock some of those great stories. That, as you've said, you know, it's a great, it's great storytelling. Just everything about it, it just happens to be in the Star Wars universe. And and you don't have to apologize to anyone for it. It's just brilliant. And that last episode, the, oh, not the last episode, the one before that, the one way out. Jesus Christ! Talk about an emotional <laughs> roller coaster, you know. Um, and maybe that is a, a Tales of the Jedi, but I mean, he's not a Jedi. So, but the Andy Circus character, I want to know what happens to him. Why was he in the prison? I want to know why he why he wasn't yeah. in the first place, and then yeah, what happened after? Yeah, and was he was he just this this guy who, you know, he was like everyone else. He ended up in prison. He feels the injustice of it all, but he found like a coping strategy to be this drill sergeant type. But you know, we didn't see him get killed. You know, he doesn't. Nece- it's not necessarily the case where he just goes back and he, he's killed or imprisoned again. You know, maybe he found another way. It's whatever the writers want it to be. You know, he could have gone and found, found a little escape pod or <laughs> jets in them off or, or something. But... <laughs> <laughs> Space canoe. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, um, so yeah. No, no. I just, I, I think it's it's really good now. I, I just think. I am feeling a little bit of content fatigue, but when it's done well, it doesn't feel, you, you don't feel the fatigue as much. And we got a nice little break from like next week, um, or this week rather. In a week's time, pretty much all the main series that are ongoing, apart from the specials, are going to be finished. So I don't think, I think Bad Batch is starting up again in, in January, but Bad Batch mm-hmm. is quite easy to watch because it's 20 minutes a week. So it's like, it's not a much of an investment. You can watch it on like mm. a, a lunch break and still have time left over. It's it's uh, mm. and people do that. Um, so I'm I'm excited for the future. But yeah, I think Ahsoka is my number one. But closely followed that is the uh, Acolyte show. It just gets something completely new, completely different. A hundred, it's fifty to hundred years before Phantom Menace, dark side ish stuff, mystery thriller. It's like if this is going to be aimed at the same audience that Andor is going to be aimed at, because I think Ahsoka has the problem if it might be a mm. bit too much like. I think Ahsoka's more like... I hope it's not, but I worry Ahsoka's going to 
be more like Book of Boba Fett. Whereas I feel like the Acolyte has the opportunity to be more like Andor. If Ahsoka, though, is like Andor in how it feels with Dave Filoni's law heavy like sort of Clone Wars and Rebels style stories mixing with the way that Tony Gilroy has uh, and all the other people involved in Andor have made it. Ahsoka will be 20 out of 10 for me but I, I just because Book of Boba Fett is a bit of a misstep uh, and a lot of missed opportunities and not really it, it messed up in a few ways I still enjoyed it but it shot itself on the foot of those Mandalorian episodes. They should have been released now or like as Christmas as like the Mando special, you know, and it's literally like, you need to watch this between episodes two and three. That's what I would have wanted. Um, but yeah, I'm, I, I'm excited. I think it'll be more like Kenobi than mm, Book of yeah. Boba Fett. That's a good comparison actually. Yeah. yeah a lot more kind of fan service. Yeah. 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 That'd be, I, I enjoyed Kenobi, but I'm not going to rewatch it. That's one of the ones where, you know, just I, with other series, I'm like, I want to watch it all. With Kenobi, I'm like, nah, episode three and six. And really, I just want to watch Kenobi get, you know, beaten by Vader and then him beat Vader. Ninety mm. percent of the rest of Kenobi, I don't, I'm not. And, I and pretend it. there was an episode in the middle where he earned that yes. victory. I stand by. He should have just. <laughs> he should have tried to go back and reconvene with Qui Gon, and Qui Gon should have helped mm. him in some way and got him to believe in himself. Uh, but I'd, oh well. Oh uh, well, we'll see. Hopefully, Andor's given me new life, but we're going to talk about that in a couple of days. <laughs> um, Dave, please tell the lovely listeners where they can find you on social media and also your shows, as well as being obviously the podfather of uh, Comics in Motion. Tell us about your other uh, love podcast that started off as a mistress, but I think that it's becoming <laughs> the new wife, and comics is becoming more of the the side hustle now <laughs> yeah well the great thing about comics is you know i just get so much enjoyment about other people creating stuff and you know uh people come up with different new ideas all the time and, and you'll and, appear on most people's shows as well to be fair to you I, I yeah, yeah, yeah but i'm pretty much everyone's <laughs> show you've been on at least once or twice and you've got mandatory yeah, CD, yeah. but I, I the joke is of the tv and movies thing for vhs but you yeah. do appear on comics a lot yeah <laughs> a no way. so so the tv and movies thing we we do have to sort of resurrect that a little bit but we, we'll we'll figure that bit out don't have to but um no, no. Uh, so what am I on at the minute? As well as all these different shows on Comics in Motion. So there's the VHS Strikes Back. We've just done a, a couple of World Cup themed things. So we did Mike Bassett, England Manager. We did, uh, I, I want to say, Escape to Victory. Yeah, it is Escape to Victory. I keep miss remembering it as The Great Escape, which is totally a different film about <laughs> 20 years earlier. Um, <laughs> we're also doing uh, Chris and Dave's reality TV cast where we're covering Australian Love Island. Yeah, uh, We're about halfway through, I think, there. And then in January, there's a UK winter season as well. We have resurrected chat footy just while the uh world cup is on as well and that was where we kind of started it really it was a 2018 world cup and so again that's just a bit of fun so you know chris and myself and then we'll probably have like another person it just it just depends when people's schedules like there's something like 17 consecutive days of football uh so you know it's just going to wow. be 15 20 minute episode uh just chatting about it and we'll be open as well about some of the um some of the interesting media takes i, I think it's very very interesting how uh high up on the moral high horse everyone is at the minute uh i find it very very weird uh the bbc on sunday were like oh it's terrible this isn't it you know but you're all fucking there in your five-star hotels <laughs> so so we'll kind of call them out on things like that as well as the football uh am i missing anything uh actually i appeared recently on geek girl soup mm. We did a uh, movie called Beyond the Infinite Two Minutes, which is a Japanese independent movie. Honestly, it, it is well worth a watch. It came out in 2020, so obviously it didn't do very well because in the middle of the pandemic and everything. Not that we're out of it, but it was worse back then. 
And uh, the weird thing is, Chris didn't hate it. You know, this this Japanese subtitle film. So, uh, yeah, that was good fun. So, Geek Girl Soup, check that one out as well. I've got that added on my list. I have not yet given it. Um, it's, it's in there. I'm like, I've got a few more pods to go before that. But uh, <laughs> you know, I'm also right at the end of my Rogue Squadron audiobook as well, because I'm de- delving nice. into a lot of the legend stuff. So I'm about an hour away from that. So I think after this conversation, I'm going to go down, do the dishes. It's a good excuse to listen to a lot of the podcasts um, and stuff. But uh, you can find me at Genuine Chit Chat on Instagram, Twitter, and on Facebook. Uh, you can find it on the YouTube channel at Genuine Chit Chat. Uh, I put all my episodes of Star Wars Comics in Canon. There will be a video version of this conversation, um, but you probably should have said that at the start. But, you know, if you want to listen to this all again, you know, go there. Or if you're already on YouTube, hello. Um, hello there. But yeah, you can find all my other genuine chit chat episodes, loads of stuff, uh, nothing to do with Star Wars, loads of stuff to do with Star Wars. Um, and then there's also Star Wars Comics in Canon where if you're listening to this and you've never checked out Styles Comics and Canon, do yourself a favour. Go check that out. It's on playlists on my YouTube channel, so it's a really easy way to kind of start. If you just want to hear everything about, like, Darth Vader or you want to hear, like, character introductions and bios just about really specific characters, like what I did with Dooku before uh, Tales of the Jedi, or if you want to hear more about Qui-Gon, people like that, whatever, go check out those episodes because you never have to have picked up a Star Wars comic in your entire life. You don't even have to know what any of them are called. Uh, I go through all of the plot details and then give you extra information along the way about species, planets, trivia, and other things that pop up as well. So check out Genuine Chit Chat and Star Wars Comics and Canon. And then obviously we're doing our and or discussion show, which would probably have come out yesterday, uh, the finale of that. Uh, and then there's always something I'm I'm doing as well as my two main podcasts and discussion shows on Comics in Motion. There's, there's other things and bits and pieces. Disney discussions is has had another episode out recently about Pixar and uh, Megan gives us a nice lesson on uh, Mexican culture for uh, Coco. Nice. Yeah, uh, she did loads of notes for Coco. Like We all waffled on about our respective uh, Pixar ch- picks and she has given loads of Easter eggs and teaches us about uh, the Day of the Dead and a lot of the important uh, pieces of Mexican culture and Latin culture that are in Coco that feature elsewhere because she teaches Day of the Dead uh, in a Spanish class because she's obviously a Spanish teacher. So yeah. when it gets near Halloween because it's it's around a similar time but it's not Halloween. It's a very different separate thing and a different time of the year but it's around the autumn slash fall time. So if people want to hear about Pixar movies, our four favourites and I want to have a Mexican culture lesson from Megan as well, check out Disney Discussions number four. It is on the feed of Comics in Motion. The video version is on my YouTube channel or it's on Genuine Chit Chat, wherever you want to listen. But thank you so much for listening, guys. Obviously, check out all the other incredible shows on Comics in Motion. Check out the Andal Discussion Show. Follow Comics in Motion at Comics in Motion P on uh, Instagram, Twitter and on on f- Facebook? I mean, Facebook is barely used, but it, it's on there, Comics and Motion Podcast. Um, even me, Facebook, I'm just like, <laughs> post on Instagram, just post it over to Facebook as well. Tweet it's all, a couple of words. It's, it's weird, isn't it? We're, we're at a, a bit of a junction at the minute because I probably use Twitter the most. Um, and obviously all the, the various shows are on there as well. But mm. I mean, uh, not loving this Elon Musk chap. You know, I think he's a bit of a dick. <laughs> uh, quite honestly but i've signed up to that mastodon hmm. but uh, yeah i'm not really convinced by it yet so i think there's a a potential void opening up um, heard of hive? For something new a lot of these star wars authors they've joined mastodon and they've joined hive they're the two right. things um that, that they've they've said about i haven't jumped i haven't jumped ship from twitter or anything yet i'm just gonna see how it goes if it i'm just gonna Maybe I'll add something for Hive because if certain people only go over there, then I'm obviously going to have to add something there. But mm. I don't know. I think Twitter's a bit rocky at the moment, but I think it's. I don't think it's going to be as bad as people think. I think most of it's going to just go back to normal. To be honest with you. Well, I mean, there's the eight dollar thing, uh, yeah, that's, which that's which th- there's been various like little data points. It's like the eight dollar thing. Okay, I'm never going to pay for that, but okay. Um, letting Donald Trump back on. Okay. You know what really pisses me off? That fucking twat always shows up in my notifications now. Oh, Elon Musk. That's yeah. a good point. Yeah, he does actually. Oh, fuck off. Yeah. I didn't invite you in here. I'm not following you. <laughs> That's a very good I've noticed that as well. Yeah. I, but I was like, but I've listened to an Elon a couple of Elon podcasts and I did I did click on one or two of the things to see, but I was like, oh, that's just, that's my fault. I looked at the the drama and now it's giving me the drama. <laughs> so No, yeah. but I, I don't think I did. It's just, wow. I think he just, just forced his way everyone. in. Yeah. 
to be fair, that does sound like the kind of thing he would do. But yes, we're currently on Twitter at the moment. But if you're listening to this in four <laughs> years' time, maybe Twitter's not even a thing. Uh, but we're on the social media places. Check out all the other shows. Rate, review, share with your friends. And uh, please tell us what you thought of Tales of the Jedi and anything else Star Wars you are excited about. Thank you so much, Dave. It's always an absolute pleasure to talk with you. I'm always excited to be able to talk anything with you, especially when it's Star Wars. And we get to it all over again in a few days' time. And, uh, you know, you're always a great person because in Comics Emotion, everyone's at different degrees of Star Wars fans. But because I got my claws in you and made you watch Rebels and then you got Clone Wars, <laughs> that's it now. All animation stuff. I mean, we're not doing weekly shows of Bad Batch because it's just too much content and it's you know it would just be me and you basically maybe uh jack <laughs> yeah. and that would and maybe i think angry andy as well it's like we can't there's so many episodes and like 20 mm. minute episodes so it's like I'm not gonna yeah, not plan yeah. to do a bad batch one but it's always good to talk to you because you, you've seen all these series uh, i love it <laughs> <laughs> so just thank you once again as always it's always delightful speaking with you no absolutely the same and it's always good good intellectual discussion as well like and you you know so much more about all these different characters that as soon as you mention them i've forgotten them already you know but <laughs> I, I i appreciate that that they mean something so it's a good excuse Thanks. to listen to the episode yourself then <laughs> even though you've been exactly yourself it's talk. like hey <laughs> voss some not someone or a, yeah so no, it's brilliant, mate. So thank you very much. And uh, yeah, I'll speak to you in two days' time or yesterday if you're listening to this. Wonderful.